Good evening, Northern Hills. Welcome to WOW, Worship on Wednesday. My name is Herschel Kriegbaum, and I'm a lay servant here at Northern Hills Church, and we are super excited that you have decided to join us on this Wednesday to recharge your spiritual batteries. Last week, we had the pleasure of being wowed by Beth Barth. This week, we have the honor of being wowed by Ronnie Brown. Uh, and also, remember, we want to hear your prayer requests and your praise reports here at the church. If you uh, feel comfortable where you are right now, go ahead and say a, uh, a prayer request out loud. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and say your praise report out loud. And remember to send those to prayer at nhumc.org so we can lift those up uh, when our prayer team meets on Tuesday mornings. Uh, as we close out this series, uh, I would like to do our prayer for America. Uh, at the end of each little section on this prayer, I'm gonna say, Lord, in your mercy, uh, and then hear our prayers. And if you said a prayer request out loud, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. If you had a praise report, Lord, we give you praise. Praise Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, with our prayer for America. Glorious and gracious God, we pray, pray that Christians would be faithful disciples who live out their callings in all areas of society, including the home, as well as the overseas mission field with Christ-centered humility and excellence. We pray for Christians to be courageous and diligent for Christ in their vocations, using their influence and character to point others in their spheres and communities to Him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray that Christians would lead pure lives in fear of and reverence for God. Pray that their lifestyles and worldviews be grounded in God's Word and the security of His grace and sovereignty, and not only by the worldly lies of temporary comfort and excess. We pray that God's people would continue to have a heart for the lost and a compassion on the needy, not only those overseas, but in their own communities and cities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray that God would be the center of each family unit and that strained families would experience healing and reconciliation. We pray for broken family relationships to be restored through Christ's grace and the power of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our local churches to preach biblically sound and gospel center messages. We pray for churches to generously use their resources to further God's kingdom in their communities and overseas. We pray for the strength, wisdom, and encouragement of pastors and lay leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our local churches to be permeated with prayer and repentance, and may they thereby experience revival in their congregations. We pray that God would use local churches to train leaders to be sent out into the world for the cause of Christ. Indeed, may the local church be the catalyst of prayer, repentance, reconciliation, and revival in America. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for educators, teachers, and school administrative leaders to be God's shining light in schools by being role models and mentors for the younger generations. We pray that Bible study and prayer groups be allowed to meet in their own public schools and for prayer to return to those institutions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for businesses, companies, and financial institutions to operate in a godly and just manner. We pray that these entities practice integrity, justice, and kindness when dealing with others. We pray for those who serve in our local, state, and federal government. Pray for the wisdom and discernment of our president and his administration, the justices of the Supreme Court, those in Congress, governors, mayors, and other government leaders. Pray that these men and women will come to fear the Lord and seek to do his will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for God's forgiveness for our nation's arrogance, greed, and apathy. We pray that we as a nation would humble ourselves before God, turn from our wicked ways, and seek his face. We pray that our sovereign God would give us another great awakening in this land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Good evening and welcome to this time of worship together. And uh, I just want us to think about a little bit tonight, 
Jesus is that one thing that we can count on to be there in our lives. So there are things where maybe situations change, circumstances change. We go through times where it's like, what's going on? I don't quite know. This past year has been a lot of that, but in the midst of all of that, Jesus is there. Jesus' love is consistent. And so just let's think about that tonight as we sing this opening song. This is Jesus, your love. Um, so let's sing together. There is a love that calls me by the name. Sure as the sun, the moon, the stars remain, your love for me will never change. Jesus, your love, Jesus, your love. There is a love that takes me by the hand, guiding my heart to find its home again. And where you are is home to me, Jesus, your love, Jesus, your love. So let my heart tell you again when seasons change and stories end, your steady love, it will sustain me through it all, Jesus, your that stays though storms may come i hear your voice within the winds that blow i hear your song it calls to me jesus your love jesus your love there is a strength that rises up in me Find a f- 
friend so faithful Who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer heavy laden cumbered with a load of care precious Savior still our refuge take it to the Lord in prayer do thy friends despise forsake thee take it to the Lord in prayer in his arms he'll take and shield thee thou wilt find a solace there Good evening, Wowzers. We're so glad that you're joining us on this Wednesday evening. So excited uh, that we're continuing uh, this Transformational Testimonies series, and I'm so excited to introduce Ronnie Brown. Thank you. Glad you're here today. Well, thanks. I'm not sure I am, but... Okay, well, you don't, you don't have to be nervous. I mean, they're very judgmental people out there. They're horrible. Like, if you mess up I know at all... Most oh, yeah, them, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. You'll hear about it. Text you. Did you just say that? Yeah, okay. So, hey, um, I just wanted to kind of ask you, I mean, you have done a lot uh, here at Northern Hills. So I kind of wanted to like, how did you just first come to, to Northern Hills? Uh, that's really a great story. Uh, Lynn and I both grew up in the church. Uh, we were married at San Pedro Presbyterian and attended there after a while, for a while after we were married. But as a lot of people do, you know, eventually things happen and you stop going for a while and the easier, you know, the longer you stop going, Mm -hmm. the easier it is to not go yeah yeah and so uh, that's kind of what happened and then our older son got old enough to play sports mm -hmm. and so we signed him up for soccer and uh, Rocky Shostall was his coach okay and so uh, we got Ross their oldest son and my son Bobby got to be best friends mm -hmm. and so obviously we, we hung out with them pretty often and after a while Every time we saw them, they said, you should come to church with us. <laughs> okay. And we're like, yeah, well, we, you know, we would, but we got this going on. We got that going on. And, and so this went on for a period of months. And uh, then we went out to eat with them at the time. And Cindy says, well, if y'all don't want to go to church, at least let me come by and pick up your kids and take them to Sunday school. Okay. Ouch. Wow. <laughs> okay. So... We talked about it. We knew we belonged in church, and, and the kids did, too. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'll forever be indebted to them for that. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. so um, that's how we got here. Like, yeah, okay. And that, that sounds like very like something Cindy would say, like, hey, this, this is how it is. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, now you're here. You've been yeah. here for how long? Uh, since the early 90s. I don't know exactly. Okay. So 20-something so, years. Okay, nice. Okay, that's, that's a good... 30 years, yeah. Okay, very so. cool. Um, so you're serving... Right now, you're serving on the ad board, but what committees have you served on? Uh, committees, I've done finance. I did two terms on SPRC. The second term, I led SPRC for, for two terms. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, then from there to, to ad board... Okay. The only one I don't think I have done is trustees, which is okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Leave that. Yeah. So what, what was the first one you did? Finance. I'm finance. Sorry. Finance is the first okay. one I did, and which is really odd because I know nothing about balance sheets and <laughs> doing all that. But you know, they explained it. So you know, we need people with, you know, hopefully I have some common sense and something to contribute from that point or something. Okay. Now, how did that happen? <laughs> Well, the, the first thing I did in the church was I counted offering. We used to have lay people come in and count the offering yeah, okay. after church on Sunday. And so uh, 
I was doing that once a month. Um, and I guess from that, you know, Milton said, oh, counts money finance. Okay, that makes and sense. So, yeah. yeah, okay. It's, 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 that feels like very yeah. AB. Like, yeah. there we go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. And so you did that, and then Milton said, hey, jump on. Yep. And you said yes. I, I did say yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but mostly what I did in the beginning was was more ministry stuff than than uh, actual committee stuff. Um, ministries like uh, Mission Under the Bridge was probably the most impactful thing I did. Okay. And again, it was an invitation from Gary Byer that brought me to that. Okay. And you know we came up here five thirty every Saturday morning, and and most times I heated tortillas, and that's what I did. And then we went downtown and served. And, uh, you know, um, it turned me into a more compassionate person. Keep, keep talking. I, I want to know how that happens. I, uh, well, you meet these people and you see the same ones every week and you realize that, but for a decision or two, or I don't know what you call a break or two or a blessing or two or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that's all of us. Yeah. You know, it would be real easy to end up there. And so just getting to know them really, you know, I mean, you probably talk to people now, I'm not compassionate, I'm not a compassionate guy, but if you'd seen me before, you'd know I am now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotcha. Um, so just because we might have some of our, our WOW viewers that doesn't know about that huge ministry, Mission Under the Bridge, uh, just spend a moment talking about that, please. Okay, well, we had a group of people. We came uh, every Saturday morning, we'd get here at 5, 5.30, and make breakfast tacos, fix coffee, uh, orange juice, hot chocolate, and then we would go down under the Commerce Street Bridge and serve breakfast and then have a little church service for them with, with a sermon and that. And so, I mean, then we'd come back and do whatever, but, you know, clean up. But mm -hmm. it was... Uh, it was really something to see the same people over and over again. They got to know you, you got to know them. And it's, it was just very impactful to me. I mean, it just changed. Yeah. And I mean, and that ministry was a cornerstone ministry oh, yeah. here. And like, if, if this is before my time here, but my understanding is that ministry was, has a direct lineage for the ministry center. Is that pretty accurate? Well, Abdon's part of, was a, yeah. was a big part of that. Okay. And somebody that I'll admire forever. Yeah. I mean, there's a guy who, uh, came to this church here after I did mm -hmm. and just blew up with what he was doing with Mission Under the Bridge. I mean, it just, it was so much him yeah. to do that. Oh, very cool. So now you're the chair of the administrative board. Right. What is that? Well, we're the, I guess, final approval group for the church for motions from finance, like budgets and that kind of thing, from trustees for capital Mm -hmm. projects, um, they all run through the administrative board. Yeah. And I guess that's part of the book of discipline. I'm not. Yeah, no, that's uh, my understanding is that the, uh, the United Methodist Church has a very core component of being a lay led ministry. So uh, that uh, clergy don't just take things and run, that they have to work with and work through lay leadership, uh, which really is the, the hands and feet of the church, uh, and, you know, they're the ones doing all like the things like mission under the bridge and things like that, and helping us make uh, decisions. So, well, and that you know, you talk about hands and feet, and that's the second ministry that really affected me was my walk to Emmaus. Okay. Uh, I went on a walk to Emmaus. My pilgrim walk was a blur. I don't remember much of that, <laughs> but I served on several teams and Emmaus teams and then Chrysalis teams, and somewhere along the line. I learned Matthew 5, 16. Okay. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Nice. And anybody that knows me <laughs> knows I can't do this. So it's God doing this. It's not, I'm not that guy, but it's God doing this through, to, through me that, that he allows all this to happen for me. Oh, okay. Wow, very cool. That's amazing. So when it comes to the, the amount of ministries that you've worked in, like what have you, what have you, what do you think that you've sacrificed uh, in order to be in those ministries? You know, I, I thought about that, and I don't, 
I don't really think it's been a huge sacrifice. Uh, it's it's a time element, mm -hmm. but it's it's not that much time. Um, it's been something that's been really fulfilling for me because I feel like I'm giving back some. That there were so many people that came before me and did so much before I became involved and and am actually doing something. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first joined the church, we didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, we came to church. Okay. And and so uh, you think about all the people that came before me and what they did for this church. And to make a place for me, it's it's really powerful. Well, that's really I love that perspective of the hey, if 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 they had treated it like, well, this is my church and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna consume, then it wouldn't have been the place for us. Right. But because they came in and said, No, I'm gonna give, then we can come in and that when you first start you you're attending and then you realize that, oh, I can give and things like that. So I've asked you about the the sacrifices. Tell me about the benefits of serving. Uh, the benefits to me are are just what I was just talking about. I think I've met such great mentors in this church. There is so many people who've showed me what it like what it's like to be a man of Christ mm -hmm. and how to live that life, and not just the older people that were here, but the younger people that are here. And you know, I I if you'd asked me my whole life, I'd have told you yes, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. but it didn't sink from my head to my heart till I was in my 40s. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's that's my next question. So let's say you had this magical machine, and you could speak to that guy uh, in his you know early forties or late thirties, <laughs> and say, "Hey, this is what I wish I had known now that I know later." What would you say? Just how really fulfilling it is to have a church family. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're going through hard times or even good times. Knowing there's people to come alongside you and help you along, you know, the, the Shaw stalls are probably still our best friends. Mm -hmm. And it's because of here that, that it's like that. Oh, that's cool. And I mean, of course, you also had the audacity to say, hey, if you're not going to pick up your kids or send us kids, I'll take them. <laughs> like, yeah, that's audacious and awesome, yeah. by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, who and else does that? Oh, yeah, but that's like, that's, that's a risky maneuver for a friend. At the yeah. same time, it shows like I'm willing to say something that might hurt your feelings because I care about you so much, yeah. which is just an amazing it is. thing uh, it that, is. that people do. And it's uh, amazing how those little little conversations that have big effects on our lives sometimes, uh, yeah. but we can't even see it until down the road sometime. Lady. Amazing. Ronnie, thank you so much for coming in. Man, I really enjoyed I it. I, I really yeah. was not looking forward to this at all, but I, I nobody, enjoyed Nobody is, yeah, because I'm so intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that's part of it. <laughs> hey, okay. Well, I was just saying, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Uh, we're so glad you hung in with us and talked to us in our uh, series, Transformational Testimonies. Uh, we will see you uh, next week. So remember whatever struggles or insecurities you might be feeling today, remember that Jesus is right there with us, that Jesus' love sustains us. And as it says in the Psalms, you are my hiding place. And that, that is what our, our confidence is in Jesus, that we can trust whatever may happen. Jesus is there and Jesus will sustain us as our hiding place. So. fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say
let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord I will trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say In the strength of the Lord, I will trust in you. Hey, Wowzers. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. We are glad that you were able to share this time with us. Now, uh, uh, Ronnie talked about the Walk to Emmaus. If you're not familiar with what that ministry is, uh, that is uh, kind of an old school ministry. It's been around for a long time, but basically it's a, it's a three-day retreat uh, ministry where you go and all your needs are taken care of, and there's 15 talks, and they're the same talks uh, that every Walk to Emmaus or Chrysalis goes to. It's an amazing program of basically just a catalyst for change in your life, and it's one of those ministries where people really show how much they care about you as a person. If you're interested in that, email me, patrickj at nhumc.org. For information about any other of our ministries and our programs, uh, go to our website www.nhumc.org. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now would you bow with me for this benediction. May the grace and peace and fellowship with Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit go and be with you all. Amen. Amen everybody. Have a good evening.